click the link in the description to download your own copy of this video's problem. Hey guys, Russ here coming with a fantastic chemistry video and today we're going to be assigning R or S to the chiral centers and the molecules shown below. Both molecules are indeed chiral. Okay, we have to use con Engel prelog rules. They basically say find the chiral center in a molecule, which is very easy to do. Just find the, find the center. It's usually carbon, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, it's the atom with four different chemical groups bonded to it. I didn't say atoms. It can be atoms. I, don't, I didn't say it couldn't be, but it could also be groups, okay? Four different groups attached to a, any atom. Usually it's carbon, but it can be other atoms. So check it out right here. One, two, three, four different groups attached to this carbon. So this is chiral. One, two, three, four. It's also chiral. All right. First thing you want to do, assign priority. So I'm going to redraw the molecule. I'm going to redraw A. Let's just call this one B. I'm going to redraw A over here. So A has a carbon attached to a chlorine, attached to a fluorine, attached to a bromine, attached to a hydrogen. I can do that a little better. Attached to a hydrogen, just like that. Now, we've got to assign priority. Before I do anything else, I assign priority to all my groups. Not a problem. Remember, Kahn and Golden Prelog say, starting at the chiral center, jump out one atom. Just jump out one atom. So I'm going to draw little stars to the atoms we're considering. Okay? So those are the atoms we're considering. Now let's write those down in no particular order. Just going to write them down. Chlorine, fluorine, oops. Bromine, hydrogen. Sorry. I just wrote them down. I'm just, whatever atom I'm sitting on, I just wrote it down. I, what I mean by sitting on is I jumped out to it. So I'm, I'm considering this. So now, chlorine, fluorine, bromine, hydrogen. It's easy to pick number four. It's almost always easy to get four and one. It's two and three that get you. Okay? So let's be careful. Four is hydrogen. Hydrogen has atomic number one. If you have a hydrogen on your chiral center, it is always priority group four because hydrogen has the lowest atomic number possible. So hydrogen is group number four. Now, let's say, let's consider now chlorine, fluorine, and bromine. Well, if you look at a periodic table, you'll see bromine. They're all halogens, first of all. You'll see bromine is lowest down on the periodic table, which means bromine must have the highest atomic number. So bromine is number one. Good. So like I said, one and four, almost always the easiest ones to figure out. Now we have fluorine versus chlorine. If you look at a periodic table, you'll see fluorine is above chlorine in the periodic table. They're in the same group. Fluorine's above it. So fluorine must have the lower atomic number. The higher up on the table you are, the lower your atomic numbers. The lower down on the table you get, the higher your atomic numbers. So now, we've picked out priority group four. We picked out priority group one. Now we're between chlorine and fluorine. Fluorine is above chlorine. Fluorine is above flu uh, chlorine in the periodic table. Chlorine is below, which means chlorine has the higher of the two atomic number. So chlorine must be priority group two, and fluorine must be priority group three. So that's the first thing you do. Sign priority groups. Most people find that to be the most difficult. It's, but it's really not that bad, right? It's really not that bad. Now, the next rule, it's a very, very important rule. The low priority group, number four, must be facing away from you, must be in the back, must be. Kahn, Engel, and Prelog have said, this group, when you're assigning R and S, this group, priority group four, must be in the back, must be facing away from you, the reader. If it's not, it's not, not correct, okay? I'll show you how to handle it, but it's not correct. It has to be a facing away from you. Here, luckily, the hydrogen is facing away from us, so we're in good shape. Now what you do, take a pencil or, or a marker or whatever, draw an arrow from 1 to 2. Draw an arrow from 1 to 2, and then 2 to 3, and then don't go to 4, actually go back to 1. Draw an arrow from 1 to 2, from 2 to 3, from 3 to 1, 
and then keep doing that. And then keep doing that with your hand. See how I'm moving the marker around in a counterclockwise fashion? It's going to the left. If the marker or the highlighter or the pen or the pencil or the circle you draw, however you want to say it, is going to the left, is rotating left, that is S. So this chiral center is, at, oh, looks like a five, is S. That chiral center is S, and that's how you assign R versus S on that one. Let's do a little bit more challenging one. Let's do B. Carbon, OH, CH3, Hydrogen coming to the front. There we go. And there's my chiral center right there. So let's jump out one atom in all directions. One, two, three, four. So we're here, we're here, we're here, and we're here. So in this case, it's going to be Oxygen versus carbon versus carbon versus hydrogen. Oxygen, carbon, carbon, hydrogen. Easy enough. Like I said, it's almost always simple to assign one and four. One and four. But we've got to be careful now. Look what happened. Number four is coming towards us. Number four is coming at us. It's the wrong direction. It has to go away from you. We're going to have to fix that, but it's not a problem. It's really not a problem. All right, good. So now... We're between this group and this group. So now, from for this group, I can jump out to hydrogen, hydrogen, or hydrogen. So my choices from there are hydrogen, hydrogen, and hydrogen. Not much to choose from there. So it's probably going to be the lower priority of the two we're considering. And what about this group right here? Well, if we jump out from here, Hydrogen, hydrogen, and there it is, carbon. There's our difference. Okay, so I think everyone will agree. We have three hydrogens here, two here, and one carbon. The carbon takes priority. So this is group number two. Let's put the two right here. Two, and this is priority group number three. We do have a small problem though. Our priority group four is facing in front of us. That's easy enough to handle. Let's rotate the molecule and put the low priority group in the back. Now students often get stressed out by this. Don't get stressed out by this. This is very simple to do. What I want you to do is I want you to imagine you have a hammer and a nail and you're gonna put a nail through the OH. In other words, the OH is gonna be stationary. It's not gonna move, okay? So imagine we're going to hold on to that O, put a nail through it, do whatever. It's not going to move. All we're going to do is rotate the bottom. So everybody on below the OH is going to rotate around. That's it. It's going to... Now students often get freaky about this. Don't. It's very simple. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to rotate. That's all I'm going to do. But notice nothing changes except for the position of the bottom, right? Okay, that's good. Everyone agrees. This stayed the same. Now, I'm going to draw this, this, and that exactly the same. Nothing's changing except for the position of these groups. Watch this. There we go. Notice, wedge, a wedge, dash, a dash. Straight line down, straight line down. Perfect. Exactly the same. These wedges and dashes and bonds are here. All I've done so far is just redraw this, leaving out the groups. That's all I've done. But now, I have to imagine, in my mind's eye, or if you have a model kit, this hydrogen is being pushed back to here. So when that hydrogen gets pushed back to there, this ethyl group has to come over here. And this methyl group comes to here. Essentially, everyone's switching places backwards. Hydrogen here, ethyl here, methyl here. So, okay. I know it might seem a little weird, but that's what we're doing. And let me make some room for myself here. Oh, 
and CH3. Again, let's assign our, let's type, let's write in our priorities. Four, one, two, and three. One to two, two to three, and back to one. One, two, three, back to one. One, two, three, back to one. One, two, three, back to one. This is going in a counterclockwise direction, so that is also S. All right? And that's how you do it. Now, if I were you, I would go back to the beginning of this video. I would write down the question. I would do it myself and then check my answer with the video. I would make sure I could do these two in, two in particular because they're very simple. I mean, I know that they may have been challenging for you, and that's okay because you're just learning it. But they are very simple examples of how to do this technique. Okay? So with that, I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, slap that like button. Go ahead and leave me a comment down below. And please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It really does help me out when people subscribe. It keeps me motivated to make more videos for you guys. Please share my content with your family and friends or anyone that you know is struggling with organic chemistry. And with that, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. We'll see you soon. Email drbets at protonmail.com if you would like a copy of every problem in this series.